Hi, I'm Mike with House on the Mend. And in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Ryobi 8-inch pole saw. Specifically, this is P4361 because it comes with the kit. So let's get started. If you break it, he will fix it. If you buy it, he will build it. House on the Mend. Right here you can see just how low all these branches are hanging. If you follow this big branch along, you'll see there's an intersection here where three trees are colliding with each other and competing for the same sunlight, and rubbing against each other in the wind. That is unhealthy. All that needs to be trimmed back. Look at these palm trees. Not only do all these brown drooping palms need to be trimmed off, but everything up here that's starting to droop, those all need to be trimmed back as well. All right, I got the entire contents of the box laid out here. Uh, first off, we have our cutting head pole. Then we have our intermediate pole, which is basically just the extension. And then we have the handle pole here that's got uh, the switch down there as well as two contact points for this strap to go around your shoulder. Uh, we also have uh, this multi-tool here. It's part wrench, part screwdriver, and that is for tensioning the chain. To protect the chain as well as anything the chain might come in contact with, it has this nice little scabbard here. Make sure you keep this. You always want to keep your chain protected. Uh, because a dull chain is a chain that won't cut and it'll overheat your unit very quickly. All right, just like the chemical sprayer that I reviewed previously, uh, this unit comes with its own 18 volt battery as well as the charger, which is fantastic. I would have liked to see a battery that has a charge indicator on it, like uh, Rigid and Black & Decker batteries do. Uh, Ryobi does offer one, however it's quite expensive, I think it's about $80. The charger has two indicator lights, uh, a red and a green. A blinking red means the battery is too hot or cold and will not charge. The red and green blinking at the same time means the battery is defective. A blinking green light means the battery is in the process of charging. And a solid green light means the battery is completely charged and ready for use. Right on the head of the cutting pole here, you'll see a white little knob. That is where you fill your bar chain oil. This little window right here is the indicator for how much bar chain oil is in remaining. Now one thing to note, this box doesn't come with any bar chain oil, not even enough to get yourself started. So make sure before you leave uh, Home Depot or if you're ordering it online, uh, make sure you also order bar chain oil, it's essential. It helps to lubricate the bar and the chain so excessive heat doesn't build up, which could ruin your unit. Now if we flip the head over, you can see we have this nut here. Uh, that is where you secure the bar in place. For proper tensioning, you would loosen this nut here, and then right here next to the bar, is a, a slot for a flathead screwdriver and that is to increase or decrease the tension of the chain and we'll get into that before use and during use. One thing to note is this is an 8 inch bar and it has a 6 inch reveal meaning the widest cut is going to be right here from this guide to the end which is going to be 6 inches. So this unit is not intended for any branch wider than 6 inches. If you take a look at the handle here, obviously right there is where the battery connects into place. And then just like a real chainsaw, you have uh, the safety lever here and then the trigger itself which will not actuate unless this safety lever is held down. And that's to prevent something getting caught in here as you're walking around and firing up the chainsaw head. These two metallic spots right here are to connect the shoulder strap, which will take some of that tension off of you as you're walking around. And then there's this little foam hand grip right here to hold on to the directions. So you always want to have two hands on the unit at all times for safety while you're cutting. 
The instruction manual is nice and clear. Uh, it separates out the languages, uh, which is nice, so you're not having to hunt uh, down each section of the manual and find uh, the language you prefer. You can flip the pages for that. One thing to note here on page 18, it says this product has a three-year limited warranty for home, family, household use, but only 90 days for business or commercial use. So this is clearly intended for light home use. All right, so here we are outside. We're getting ready to start. I'm quite excited to try this guy out, but there's a couple things that we're gonna need to do first. Uh, one, we need to check and adjust if necessary the chain tightness. So when the chainsaw is cool, you want a slight sag in the bottom of the chain, not so much that the flats are fully exposed like that, but just a little bit of slack. And once the chainsaw heats up, that tightness will either loosen a little bit typically, or it could get even tighter. So you always want to start somewhere right in the middle. Now, by my liking, this is way too tight straight out of the box. So we're going to loosen this just a little bit. You can see here we have lock, and unlock little markings here. It's basically just lefty loosey righty tighty for this little guy here. I'm hearing some clicks going on as I turn that, but that should get um, this nut loosened off of the bar and you can see I'm able to pivot it now. Next thing to do is to come right here and loosen the uh, chain. I'm loosening that right now. All right. Now that is a bit too much for my liking. You see that? So kind of like when you tune a guitar, you go down more and, uh, and then you bring it up to the right spot. It's the same concept here. So I'm just gonna bring that right back up to the best spot, which for me is about right there. Little bit of slack is just right. Let's come right back here and tighten this up. And I like that when I get to a good tight spot right there, I don't notice any difference in the chain tightness. That means it's not like sagging and coming back up, thus tightening the chain. That is a lot better for my liking. All right, so with the chain adjusted to the proper tension, now it's time to add some bar chain oil. I removed the little reservoir cap and I flipped the unit around so you can see this little reservoir window. All right, so uh, there's nothing special about this particular brand of bar chain oil. Any bar chain oil will be fine. Uh, I'll leave a link to some in the description, but you're good to go at any Home Depot or Lowe's or other home improvement store. So let's pour a little bit in here. You can see I'm pouring very little and we're starting to get some indications on this window. Boy, that is a tiny little amount and we are already full on this window. So uh, I hope this doesn't use too much too quickly. Otherwise we're gonna be doing this a lot. All right, when it comes time to connect either the cutting pole to the handle or the intermediate pole between the two, you simply need to make this connection with the socket and the threaded base, and they go right together, also making an electrical connection. And then you take the collar here, and you hand tighten that. And that locks the two poles together and keeps that electrical connection uh, together. Pretty simple. All right, let's take a moment to talk about making a cut on a tree branch. Whenever you start to make a cut, you want to start from the bottom. As you can see, it's written right here in the instructions for the Ryobi pole saw as well. You start from the bottom and you make a cut about a quarter of the uh, way up the diameter of the branch. And that way, when you're making a subsequent cut anywhere further out on the branch, you prevent the branch from breaking away partially and peeling down the rest of the way and thus damaging the tree. 
Uh, here's an example I found at a local shopping center of a tree where the branch had torn away and ripped down, and that can cause severe damage and introduce uh, disease into the tree. Now, because the Ryobi saw is on a pole that's quite flexible, like fiberglass, I'm gonna be interested to see how it does when I put upward pressure on the chainsaw to make that first cut, and we'll find out. Now, here's an example of a good, healthy, well-heeled cut uh, of a branch on this tree. You see how the skin here, or the bark, has healed over the actual cut, thus sealing in uh, the water and nutrients and sealing out uh, any kind of parasites and disease. All right, time to make our first cut. We're gonna cut this branch. I'm gonna start with an undercut like we talked about. Then I'm gonna come over, cut the rest of the branch, and then we'll do a final cut right here so it's good and clean. I've got the battery connected. I've got the shoulder strap on. Let's see how we do here first. All right. Now we're gonna take this spot right here. And we're gonna rest that against the branch and fire it up for our through cut. Stepping back. All right, now let's do our final cut that goes all the way through. I'm gonna be just a little ways off the main trunk. And there we go. All right, initial thoughts. Uh, first off, the sound of the motor is not too loud for my ears. Uh, I'll probably put some headphones on and listen to some music anyway, but it's not really loud or uh, shrieky or whiny or anything like that. It wasn't bad at all. Um, I felt quite a bit of bounce when I was going through that third cut here. Uh, and we'll see if that persists. Um, it's fairly well balanced. I, mind you, I only have the, uh, the first two connections made. I haven't put the intermediate pole in yet, so we'll see, how, we'll see how that goes as well. All right, why don't we give you a first-hand view and hook up the wand cam. Let's make it happen. All right, let's try another cut, this time with the intermediate handle installed. <laughs> A little more bouncy with the intermediate pole as you might expect, fiberglass. Not bad though. Now I never do this, but let's go straight from the device to the charger. I can feel the heat on this battery. I always let these cool off first, but let's see if we get that error code. Yep, all right, so straight out of the tool on a hot day to the charger. Uh, the charger senses that that battery is too hot and it gives you that red blinking light saying, you know, you're gonna have to wait for me to cool down. 20 minutes later, the battery's cooled off and charging. All right, looks like we've had our first kind of 
malfunction or jam or something, if you listen, there's something binding, either the chain or we've got something clogged inside. So let's check that out. All right, so as we look here, we can see all this goop here uh, and maybe the chain getting loose. Something has caused it to bind and come off uh, the bar in a couple spots. So let's take this screw off, take this whole cap off, clean this whole area out and reset the chain in the bar. All right, this shouldn't take long. I have the battery disconnected and we're just gonna take the provided wrench and unscrew this guy. Let's unscrew it all the way. It'll give us a chance to clean it out and an opportunity to take a look inside. All right. Lots and lots of gook while we're at it. We're just going to wipe all that off. Let's get in here, get all this. Careful of these chains, they're still very sharp. Get all that goo out of there. Somewhere in here is the port where the oil comes out, so it's best if we can get a lot of this sawdust out, because that sawdust um, will absorb the oil. I don't see anything broken. It's just a, a mess inside is all. All right, let's reset it. We're just gonna come back in here. You can see this little spot right here uh, corresponds with the adjusting block on the bar. So let's set that right back in place. Make sure our chain's right in there where it belongs. Good. Okay. I'm going to screw that down by hand because we want to, of course, retighten this chain and tension it just the right way. Now you've seen me do that before, so I'll go ahead and take care of this and we'll be back in action. A chainsaw based pole saw is not effective on wispy little branches like this, so we're going to cut those by hand. Hey Mr. Tree, what you got against me? Gotta grow so tall and drop so many leaves. Ah, oh, tell me, please. Show you block out my song. So after several days of use, I think I've come to a pretty good conclusion about the pros and cons of this little pole saw. First, let's talk the pros. The battery life was really good. Uh, it went through batteries a lot more than, say, the chemical sprayer that I previously reviewed that I just couldn't get the battery to wear out. I went through about two or three uh, each day that I was cutting, and I was cutting for several hours. So that's not bad at all. Also, the chain never got loose. I really never needed to adjust the chain, but the, like the first one or two times, and then it just got into a spot where it stayed perfect. And also with regard to the chain is how sharp it stayed. I've never been a big fan of the little round file where you file back and forth in opposite directions on the teeth of the chainsaw to keep it sharp. I haven't had good luck with that. Uh, I found that it made my cuts wander and it heated up the wood quite a bit. I'm just not good. So I would take my chains off and go have them professionally sharpened. In anticipation of needing to do that, I bought a separate chain right off the rack at Home Depot, but I never needed to use it over several days of cutting both uh, the African sumac trees as well as all the palm trees. So wherever they got this chain from, it is fantastic quality. Now on to the cons, and I'll do those in order of significance in my opinion. 
First of all, this little oil reservoir is ridiculously small. I was constantly stopping after maybe 10 minutes or so of cutting to go back and refill it. It is way too small. They ought to have done a better job of finding a way to put in a bigger reservoir. Secondly, the saw is quite off balanced. Uh, all the weight is up here at the top as you can expect with uh, something like this. And when you put the third bar on, it was really uncomfortable to use and it really takes a lot of um, muscling through the cuts and lifting it up. Your shoulders may get tired as mine did. As far as the strap goes, I found it only helpful for carrying the saw in between tree locations and then only when I had just the two poles. Whenever I went to the third pole, which was most of the time for me, the strap I found to be not worthwhile at all and I did not use it so it wouldn't get in my way. And lastly for the cons would be at all the connection points. Sadly, Ryobi chose to use rivets to connect this fiberglass pole to these uh, connection points where you twist lock uh, each post together. Now these became loose very quickly. So I'll cut to a couple sections of B-roll where I show just how pronounced the wobble becomes from these rivets. What I think is happening here is the fiberglass pole is connected only with these rivets. I don't think there was any glue because if there was, it, it certainly uh, came off or is, was not effective. So it's only held on with these rivets. And as you're using the saw and cutting and pulling down the branches and things, the hole that was originally drilled in the fiberglass to make room for the pop rivet um, expanded. And now it's very, very loose. And when you put all three poles together, the wobble was really uncomfortable. It was unsettling. I almost thought uh, when I first noticed it that the pole maybe was cracking or about to break. And so I immediately stopped cutting and went to investigate. And sadly, I found out that they used rivets, which is just so disappointing. One last little thing I did notice when I was cutting, this uh, protector here that protects the gear and where the chain comes on to it uh, did fill up quite often with debris from the trees. And thankfully that little tool that it came with to tighten the chain uh, also worked really well to clean out this area. They probably could have come up with a better way to shed that debris away because I did have to clean it every time I came down to fill the bar oil. Oh, future me forgot. One last thing. Be very careful where you set this saw. I did have two occasions where the bar chain oil leaked out of it onto the surfaces underneath. So you're going to want to store it uh, with either a pan under it or make sure you invert it upside down and get all the bar chain oil out of it because it will leak and uh, that kind of oil can be really rough on surfaces not intended such as masonry. So with all those pros and cons listed, I am going to keep this pole. So I thought it did a pretty good job for what it's intended for and I would have no problems recommending it for light home use provided you know my thoughts on some of the significant cons. Now, if you like this video, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the YouTube algorithm to start suggesting it to more people like you. I'll also leave a link in the description for this pole saw, as well as some bar chain oil that you will need to get yourself started. You can also find both of them right off the rack at Home Depot. Until next time, thank you for watching.